What's up everyone? Today we're here just to bring you some updates of what's been happening around the OFR and a few little check-ins on some of the new arrivals. You guys are probably dying to figure out what's been happening with them. So first up, we got Larry the Lobster. He's over in this 90 gallon by himself until we figure out what we want to do with them. Of course, both tiger fish are still doing well over here. They're actually getting super, super fat. But uh, I have not broke these guys and gotten them onto shrimp or tilapia yet. So they've been kind of a pain, but they are growing nonetheless and it is a matter of time. Over here, went ahead and moved the Dorado back in because we moved some of the other fish out of here that the Dorado was picking on. So we joined the Dorado with the Planiceps catfish is also known as a firewood. They are long, slender body. The, the biggest one that we've actually had was 54 inches long. He was a beast and uh, he, he died a long time ago, probably about six years ago, I wanna say. But this is uh, about a 13 inch or so, and we're gonna go ahead and grow him back out. Have not gotten him to eat yet, but that will just be a matter of time. This Dorado is growing, so once he gets big enough, he's going to be moved over to the 1,000 gallon. Over here in quarantine, we do have red tails left. We have four or so, and a iridescent shark, which I actually found a great home for some of these guys. They will be being picked up on Wednesday. So uh, they'll, they'll be going to a much bigger spot than they're in now and I, I feel good with where they are going so we'll go ahead and let some of these big guys go because I was just about ready to put these guys over in the 3,000 gallon and they can live there until they uh, find a new home. Down here this air one is about ready to uh, be moved out of quarantine. You can see he, he was uh, messed up in transport but we are healing him back up and I think he's uh, just about good enough to go into a tank with much more fish, have a lot more room, and uh, hopefully he can play nicely and get out of this tiny little tank. But we had to treat him. Um... Oh, before I go to that tank, let's look in here. We put all them cichlids in here. I can point a few out, like this strawberry one right there. That is a type of peacock cichlid. Where's the other ones? I, I can point them out as soon as I see them. We got a few more dragon bloods. Um, there's a yellow one in here that's absolutely stunning. This guy, look at him. He's blue and yellow. Put in a few of those guys, but yeah, they added to the color of this tank. We've been slowly just adding in peacocks, so if we get any of like the, these, you know, bumblebees or just the plain Janes, we'll go ahead and rehome them. Any of the erratus, we'll go ahead and rehome. Um, you know, just stuff like that, because we, we don't need a bunch of African cichlids in here like this. We just want to have the variety on this tank. And it's actually looking pretty darn good. It's looking nice and clear. I'm happy up with it. This one's actually holding right now. So we're going to have some of them little babies here soon. More yellow. I would like to get these, uh, you know, big blue ones, the peacocks, the white blazes, have them breeding in here. That would be pretty awesome. But yeah, we took them out of the, the 90 gallon, we put them in here, and we also added in a bunch of smaller plecos to help with the algae problem. Um, not really sure, can't find none right now, I was hoping, but that's alright. Alright, so moving on. Not really much going on here, we're going to turn the corner, and we're going to walk down to this 750. Uh-oh, who's in here? We've got the Gobi. Gobi's do doing nice. Um, he's settling in. He kind of makes this corner over here his big, big old home. He's not really messing with nobody. So we should be good to go. But not much to give an update here. But he is uh, living life in this 750-gallon tank. Up there, though, is the... Australian lungfish. I have the light off because I'm trying to have him come out and feed. You can see he's right there behind that plant, but he is eating on shrimp. You can see there's little chunks of shrimp in there for him. So we want him to eat, so we try and, you know, 
feed him a couple times a day. So moving on over here to the thousand gallon, we moved some fish in. We had this long nose gar. We got the arapaima right there, of course. Oh, I gotta clean this window. We got that lima shovel nose. These guys were all in that 125. Um, who else? The Feste is actually coloring up super nice. Look at those colors. Um, just today I added in the red tiger motag from the 80 tall. And that's what that fish is hiding underneath the log right there. If he comes out, I'll, I'll show him. But uh, the weenies are out. They're normally hiding all the time. But I like this one right here. So if you look at that one, you can see his normal pattern. But you look at this guy, it's kind of an oddball pattern. Pretty awesome. All right. These uh, green terrors are actually getting along now in a much larger tank. He had his uh, fins nipped off, so we uh, split him up and healed back up. Now we put him back in here and he's still doing good, so he'll continue to heal up and grow. And I think that does it for the thousand gallon. Over here, the discus are still doing pretty nice. Um, they, they are eating every time we feed them. They're, they're not so skittish anymore, so you come up to the tank you can actually film them and they look beautiful. Look at that one. But my favorite one in here is, uh, he's actually an albino. Where's he at? Where's he at? So many plants in here. And he's probably hiding in the back somewhere. I don't see him. He's, he's like a, a pigeon like that, but he's got red eyes. He's an albino. Super neat discus. And then over here we've got the angel tank. Now some of you guys were worried about the plants, how they came out of a nice planted tank and we put them over here. Well, you know, the plants are growing, they're spreading. The, this guy we took from this tank over here, it's spreading nice. All these Anubias are rooting and spreading, so I think it's doing pretty darn good. Over here in the Stingray Pond, this Arapaima actually found a new hide because he's getting a little bit too big to keep hiding in between the milk crates. So he'll actually squeeze himself in between this uh, sump here or right out on the side of this uh, tub here. But he's always looking for food. Oh, look at that. That was sweet. <laughs> What's up, bud? Scared me a little bit. <laughs> Ooh. He's a feisty one. Oh, he got my finger. <laughs> Good, wholesome content right there. Oh my goodness. Jesus. All right, then we got the uh, Arrow Want One of there. He's actually getting ready to be bumped back up to the 4,400 gallon tank. All the stingrays are doing great. Nothing really to update there. Oh, look at that red on his tail. It's starting to pop on this guy. I also feed him every single day as well. All right, so I got some updates to do in this tank. We've got the Indian shovel nose there, both the phantoms, and then the platinum over there. They all seem to be getting along and doing great. They're all eating. Look at this guy. That is a 34 and a half inch Adonis Pleco. Just look at him, beautiful. Hubert, get out of the light. <laughs> now, of course, we got the jowl and the gooch over here. Both eating well. Look at him. He's putting on some size. So uh, they're, they're both not aggressively eating. I have to hand feed both of these guys. So I have to take chunks of food and put it right by their mouth. And that's the only way I can get these guys to eat. So they're going to stay in this 650 gallon dog bone for just a little bit more until I'm more comfortable that these guys can, you know, feed on their own. Same thing with this Wallago. Leary, he'll eat on his own, but you have to kind of target feed him and throw the food right in front of him. So once he's big enough, he'll be bumped over to the 3,000, of course. Oh, look who's out. The Zan, or not the Xanthic, the Melanistic Alligator Gar. Everyone's doing nice over here. This Paraiba is getting so fat. I want to move him, but when a fish is do doing good, you don't touch him. He's coming in on about, uh, I'd say he's about 22 inches. 
He's almost at that two foot mark and look at that beautiful streamer off the back. That is just gorgeous. So you put, put them in with other fish and they're gonna think that's a worm and eat it off. So him being in with the uh, stingrays here is actually a good mix. And I'm very, very happy about that one. Look at this bass, he's do doing great. But this small paku seems to be getting along with the, uh, the, the, the big guys. No one's nipping on him, he's nipping on no one else. So it's a big peaceful community here. Um, the convicts in here, they are actually still thriving. They hide down in these pieces of wood and there are two of them in there. Still don't know how they got, got in there, but you know what? They can stay. Um, nothing much to update in here. I don't think we added no but buddy didn't take no one out. Beautiful arrow. Tarpon is definitely putting on some size. Everyone's doing great. And I think the last update I owe you guys is out here. Okay, oh, he got a light on the 350 gallon. So we got the, the beams works back on here. Goldfish are on one side. The high fin banded sharks are on the other. So they're all down there. We were actually able to have plants over here and that they can grow on this, but the goldfish actually eat them. So that's why we have the divider in here to separate the fish and the plants. Okay, we are working ourselves around. Oh, look at that, John's in the pond. <laughs> the reef tanks do, do doing great. All the corals are doing great. They're actually spreading. Everything's looking great. And soon he will move them over to 180 gallon that'll be on that wall. Look at him, he's trying to feed the gar with a fork. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it would have been nice if you found that in those tongs you were looking for. I guess a fork's the next best thing, huh? <laughs> hey, it works. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Look at them Gar getting so close to his toes. Oh, he took that one. Super neat. See, I didn't even know that this was going on. I'm just in there making a vi video and look at that. I want to feed him with my hand that close. <laughs> look at all four gar over here. We're actually uh, to, to the point to where we're kind of ready to put the albino one in here and the xanthic short body as well. So we could potentially have six gar in here. These platinum gar are actually getting super massive. That one's probably about three foot long, if not longer. Well, if this guy was about 48 and a half, he's getting close, so he, he might be over. I, I'd actually be almost willing to pull the large platinum out of here and stick a tape measure on him, see how long he actually is. I, I just guesstimate from when we put him in, so he, he might be over three foot now. Of course, Brutus over here doing great, looking awesome. King of the pond, look at him. His red is really sneaking up his body, but it is not as vibrant as that Pima in the other room. So uh, let's hope that coloring keeps coming out. Okay, so last update, Frontosa tank looking good. We put this uh, Pseudocanthicus serratus in here. He has been doing wonders in this tank. Before, we'd always have uh, detritus and just debris from the uh, frontosa eating and leaving just globs of food that would then, you know, fuzz over. He actually goes inside these caves, he cleans them out. So now there's no detritus on the bottom of this tank. Woohoo! That is a win for us and uh, he's eating great. So we never have to worry about feeding him because the fronts drop a bunch of food. So. Win-win. Now over here we've got the same thing, but with bass, with the Pseudocanthicus serratus. Never really have an issue with this tank. I was worried about everyone getting along, but everyone seems to be doing awesome. Look at that knot on his head. It is getting huge. Some of these uh, other guys are starting to show out. It was one of the uh, Kelberry, but they're hiding back in the rock. Look at these guys doing absolutely awesome. They're starting to color up nicely. They got that nice golden color underneath their, their jaw and then it recedes back to yellow and blue fins. 
Yeah, there's a little bit, bit of attitude there. Well, watch it there, bud. Look at that coloring now. Beautiful. All right, guys, I gotta... Oh, wait, one more thing. Koi out back. I'll give you a little sneak peek. All right, that's all you guys get. Everyone's doing great, looking beautiful. Hope you guys enjoyed today's vi video. If you guys want to see more awesome content with the Ohio Fish Rescue, something real big's happening there starting Tuesday. So you guys got to stay tuned. And as always, stay fishy, my friends.